A pleasant welcome to all my dear 8th standard children. Today we are going to see the next topic that is from your chapter ecosystem, your last unit interdependence among living organisms, right. So, the, we are going to discuss about the interdependence between the plants and the animals, right. Yes. So, we have already learned that all living things depend on each other, right. So, we can say no living things cannot survive by itself. So, all living things depend on other living organisms either directly or indirectly, right. For instance, I can say uh, a deer eats grass, right, and a lion or a tiger eats deer, yes. So, in this example, we can say a deer directly dependent on plant, grass to live, right, but the dependence of lion or a tiger is independent, right. So, the dependence of a lion on grass is independent. So, without the grass, the deer cannot able to get the food and thereby the tiger cannot able to get the food from the deer. So, here the interaction between the grass and a deer is direct, but whereas the interaction between the grass and the lion is indirect, right. So, even though the lion does not eat grass, it eats deer, but the grass is important for a deer, then only the lion can able to get the food, right? Yes. So, we are going to see the, what is the interdependence between the living organisms, right? So, we can see some other, uh, even other living organisms like birds, insects, reptiles. So, these animals also need other animals to survive, right. So, the survival of all the living organisms are independent, uh, dependent on each other, right. So, we can say in a forest, uh, if a, a number of lion increases, definitely all the lion will eat the deer and thereby there will not be any uh, other animals left over in the forest, right. The same way, uh, we can say if more uh, deer is present in a forest, all the deer will eat all the grass and thereby it will not leave any grass for the other animals as food, right. So, that is why living organisms should exist and thereby it needs some, it, it, it must exist some certain proportions to live, right. So, it also live in that place and also let the other organisms, other living organisms to survive, right. So, this is known as interdependence upon among the animals, right. So, here we can see the balance in this organism. So, once the uh, number of animals increases, the number of animals, uh, the plant eating animals increases. So, all the plant eating animals will eat all the grass, plants present in that area and thereby the other plants, other animals cannot get the plants. Right. So, there should be some balance. So, uh, all the uh, living organisms should survive and the same way they also let uh, the other organisms to survive, uh, right. So, there should be some balance between the plants as well as the animals. So, then only all the livings can able to survive for a longer period, okay. So, here this is known as, this is what balance in nature. So, here two um, to show the balance in nature, to show the uh, interaction between the plants and the animals or, uh, or between the animals. So, they, there exists some association that is known as, we can say it is a, sim, there are some uh, terms that refers to the association, right. So, it refers to symbiosis, predation and parasitic. okay. So, these are all the association that uh, takes place between the living organism. So, first we are going to see about the symbiosis. So, what is symbiosis? Symbiosis. So, symbiosis is the interaction between two living organisms. So, one and two. So, there will be two living organisms from different species where the two living organisms are benefited 
right so because of the second animal the first animal is benefited and because of the first animal the second animal is benefited so uh, this is known as mutual symbiosis okay so some interaction some association where we can say the uh, some animals we can say that only one animal will be benefited the other animal will not be benefited because of the association because of the uh, interaction okay so that is also a symbiosis so one species will be benefited the other will not be benefited right so that is no also a symbiosis so here we are going to uh, see some examples about the symbiosis so first one crocodile crocodile and a bird so here we can say some uh, in the uh, crocodiles in the mouth there will be some uh, insects or there will be some gums that is present inside the between the uh, teeth of the crocodile so what the bird is doing here is the bird is coming and eating the uh, things present between the teeth and thereby the teeth uh, the crocodile is also benefited and the bird is also getting benefited okay the next example that we are going to see is here so this is sea anemone and clownfish so there will be some small small invertebrate that is present in the sea anemone that will disturb the sea anemone right so already uh, in your uh, seventh standard you would have learnt about the sea anemone under the sea lentrata that is uh, uh, nidaris right so here it has a stinging cells so the sea, sea anemone have a stinging cell so this stinging cell will not affect the clownfish where the clownfish is immune to that stinging cell so if a big fish see the clownfish the big fish come here to eat the clownfish so that time the sea anemone with the help of that stinging cell it will uh, prevent the large fish that is eating eaten by the clownfish so thereby the clownfish also getting benefited and also the clownfish will eat the small small invertebrates that is present in the sea anemone that is disturbing the sea anemone right so the sea anemone is also getting benefited and the clownfish also getting benefited okay so this shows this association this interaction is also a symbiotic interaction okay the next example is here a buffalo and crow so here many uh, uh, small small uh, insects that will come near to the mouth of the buffaloes right so that is uh, uh, near to the uh, wild buffaloes so you can see the birds will come and eat all that insect that disturbs the buffalo right so thereby the two different it is two different species so the two different species are getting benefited okay the next one is here we can see a sucker fish and whale okay so the uh, whale or it can be a shark okay so the sucker fish uh, as it is very small uh, to prevent the fish from other animals to uh, not to uh, eat the, that sucker fish so the sucker fish will un, uh, lay under the big fish so thereby the uh, any any uh, other large fishes or any big fishes will not come and eat the sucker fish because it uh, already it stays under the very large uh, uh, large whale or it can be a shark okay so this also a example of symbiosis okay so symbiosis is the interaction right and also not only with the animals we can see the interaction that is the uh, symbiosis in the plant family also so here you can see algae and lichens so lichens they uh, as they are uh, they uh, they don't prepare their own food so that is why they take the food from the algae so the association between the algae and the lichens is the lichens get the food from the algae but the same way the algae cannot able to survive they cannot able to uh, protect themselves so thereby the lichens will protect the algae to adapt in that place okay so here also the lichens and algae are getting benefited okay and also we can see the mycorrhiza mycorrhiza is a fungal so that is present in the soil so this 
roots the roots help in help the uh, i mean uh, to take the nutrients from the soil the fungal will help the plant roots to take the new, uh, minerals from the soil so this is also a symbiotic relationship okay the next one is we are going to see about the parasitism okay so this is known as parasitism so here i can write para citizen so here only one species getting benefited other will not be getting benefited and other will be getting harmful okay so example we can say it is a parasite so this parasite can be in two different forms so one is ecto the other one is endo so here the uh, that one species will take the food take the uh, nourishment from the living organism right so the example for ecto is uh, our lice so lice and then ticks so these are all the examples of ectoparasitism and for endoparasitism endo means it refers to inside so inside the body of the animals uh, some organisms live inside the body of the animals for example tapeworm ascaria so these are the uh, organisms that live inside the body of the other living organisms and they will suck the blood and they will survive with the help of the living organisms okay so it can be two ecto parasitism and endoparasitism so now we will see the example of the ectoparasitism so you can see lice pain they will say right so the lice will take the blood from the living organisms so thereby here only the one species getting benefited only the lice only the tapeworm is getting benefited whereas the other organism will not be getting benefited it will be get, it becomes harmful only okay right so this is about your parasitism and we can see not only the parasitism lies between the animals even with the plants also example is cuscasta so the name name of the name of the you can see no greenish uh, very slender stem so this is known as cuscasta cuscasta so this cuscasta plant cannot able to uh, grow in a, uh, it has a very slender stem so thereby it needs some support to grow so that is why the cuscasta will take the other uh, trees or other plants and thereby it will spin along with the other trees or plants and they take the uh, food they take the food from the other plants or other trees okay so cuscasta is the plant parasite okay the next one so the next one is you can see about predation so predation here it refers so one organism kill the other organism to get the food to survive okay so this association this interaction between the or uh, living organisms so that relationship is known as predation okay so here we will write so here you can see a lion hunts a deer for the food okay so this is predation so here the lion is a predator where it will hunt the other organism for food okay and the deer the deer becomes a prey okay so no, here lion is a predator deer is a prey so the animal that is killed that is known as prey the animal that kills the other animal for food is known as predator okay so this relationship we can say for some other examples also so it can be for between the locust and a crops so once the locust that is grasshoppers um, come and eat the crops so there the crops becomes the prey and the locust becomes a predator right the same way a uh, snake eats a frog or a rat so the rat or a frog becomes a prey and a snake becomes a 
predator ok. So, this predation we can also implies some animals they exhibit they adapt themselves uh, to the surrounding to protect themselves from the enemies. So, they mount a uh, uh, effect called camouflage. So, that is known as camouflage you can see a leaf insect and a stick insect. So, the stick insect will look like a stick thereby it prevents itself from the predators ok. Likewise, this uh, leaf insect the leaf insect will look like a leaf. So, when a predator may be like a frog or maybe like a lizard comes near to that place it will think this uh, as a leaf and the lizard or the frog will go as it is it will not eat the uh, leaf insect ok. So, it will think that it is a leaf or it is a stick. So, thereby they can prevent the body structure is like that to prevent themselves from the predators ok right. So, next we are going to see about the forest ecosystem. So, in the forest ecosystem we can see many animals that survive in the forest right. So, forest is a place where we can see many plants, trees present there and also some many animals live inside the forest. So, now we are going to see the forest ecosystem and what are the relationship between the animals right. So, first we are going to see the uh, about plants. So, plants, trees they prepare their own food and thereby this plants are eaten by the herbivores or the plant eating animals. So, it can be a, a giraffe or zebra or deer or um, uh, it can be any other organisms I mean plant eating animals they eat the plants that is producing their own food right. So, they are herbivores. So, as plants preparing their own food they are called as producers and this producer are consumed by the herbivores that is plant eating animals. So, these animals are called as consumers. So, as they are directly taking the food from the plants so they are called as primary consumers ok. The next one so this plant eating animals are eaten by the flesh eating animals may be a lion or tiger or cheetah or leopard. So, here they are also consuming the food from the plant eating animals right. So, they become the secondary consumer. So, the first consumer is the primary consumer are plant eating animals herbivores and the secondary consumers are flesh eating animals that is carnivores ok. So, next uh, once once the animal cannot be hunt for food. So, that animal becomes a top carnivore ok. So, after that the uh, animal dies. So, the uh, animal uh, is decomposed with the help of uh, microorganisms like uh, bacteria and fungi ok. So, lastly the in the end of the ecosystem we can say decomposes of the uh, last uh, organisms that decompose the dead uh, I mean uh, dead animal or plants ok. Right. So, in this class you have learned about the um, interaction between the plants and the animals the living organisms. what is the interdependence between the living organisms. So, if the uh, number of population of uh, animals increases. So, that will affect the ecosystem and thereby we have to always maintain a balance between the plants and an animals. Of course, all animals eat the plants and thereby we have to uh, grow more amount of plants. The plants should be more than the animals right. And then also we have learnt about the uh, symbiotic relationship between the animals and the parasitism relationship between the animals. And lastly, uh, we have uh, discussed about the predative uh, relationship between the animals right as well as plants also we saw ok. So, it shows there is some relationship that is interaction between the plants between the animals between the living organisms. So, and finally, we discussed about the forest ecosystem. So, what is forest ecosystem and what is the food chain that is present in a forest ecosystem you can uh, frame a food chain right. So, it can be a grass or deer or lion right. So, likewise you can uh, uh, frame a food chain for a forest ecosystem right ok. So, with this you have learned something about the interdependence among the living organisms. So, hope you have understood. Thank you for watching. Have a good day.